Good evening, Littleton. Oh, Talk Francis, how you doing? <laughs> May 22nd, 2024, Board of Health meeting. It is now 7 o'clock. Um, we have three members of the Board of Health here at the moment. Um, for the Board of Health information, I did hear from Dr. Wayson yesterday. He is unavailable for tonight's meeting. Um, but we do have quorum, so we're going to get started. Our first item for 7 o'clock is um, discussion regarding reorganization, reorganization of the board. Um, I'll obviously open it up to discussion from the board. I will share, uh, before we get started on it, that with only three members of the board present, I'm a little bit hesitant to reorganize the board without the full board present, since obviously we can choose to reorganize anytime we'd like to. If we reorganize tonight, doesn't mean we can't do it at our next meeting as well, if that's our choice. Um, but obviously, I would love to have the full full board here to be able to to make an informed decision and any anyone for a position of leadership within the board to be able to accept or decline based on their own uh, availability and, and interests. Uh, I'm not sure what the will of the board is on that. I am more than happy to share the wealth and rotate positions. I just want to make sure that we can do it as a full board and not just a couple of us. So any thoughts from the board around reorg? Mr. Chair. Mr. Baker. Uh, I agree. I, I made the point before uh, in the past when we were reorganizing, I think it's important for everybody to be here uh, to have a say. All right. Um, pleasure of the board. Would you like me to continue for chair for this meeting ex officio, I guess, until uh, a formal reorganize our next one? Yes, All right. Please. I'm happy yeah. to continue. So um, we're going to wrap up our Seven o'clock discussion around reorganization of the board. We're going to table out until our next regularly scheduled meeting, which, give me a moment, I will tell you when that is. I apologize. I restarted my computer and I forgot to open up my calendar. Our next regularly scheduled meeting should be on June, excuse me, 12th? June 12th. Yep. 12th. All right, so that brings us to our, what we are, my clock says 7.03. We are two minutes early for public hearing, so we will um, hold off on our 7.05 public hearing for a moment, although I see no one in the audience. Um, I'm going to jump ahead with a little bit of correspondence. Oh, Mr. Baker, go ahead. Uh, I just have a quick comment on administrative matters. Uh, I was hoping that uh, moving forward, uh, we might be able to get a calendar invite for these meetings uh, sent to us uh, with the Zoom link in the uh, the meeting location, as well as any uh, meeting ID and meeting password uh, in that calendar invite, uh, so that it automatically goes into the uh, calendars of all the board members or anybody else uh, due to attend the meeting. Yeah, no, that seems like a great idea. Um, I think from an administrator side, it would be probably Brenda or Francis or both of them as a team figuring out how to make it a iCal or whatever the extension is for a calendar invite built into an email. But that seems like it's probably something that's probably pretty doable. Um, but we'll see what Brenda, I did not hear from Brenda whether she's going to be here this evening or not. Um, if she's going to be late, she usually sends a message, but I have not seen anything. Um, she just yeah, told me she was going to be late. Okay, thank you. But um, it shall be done. You'll get something tomorrow. Thank you. Perfect. To say we probably yeah I love the idea of Kevin if we do that because we're gonna have to notify anybody for any of our hearings anyway that you know here's the date and time of the meeting include that in their emails as well as just one more level of facilitation for any any of our participants whether it's board members or outside experts or petitioners just to have that on the calendar I love the idea all right well thank you for that sir that brings us exactly to seven oh five. Awesome work to our 705 public hearing regarding the Board of Health um, portable toilet regulation. Um, I know Francis did a bunch of work on this, putting it together. Francis, do you have it? Would you like to share? Would you like me to pull it up and share? Um, yeah, if you just want to pull it up, just a reminder, anything that's in red is stuff that's interchangeable if you want it to be. The rest of it is kind of boilerplate. Um, they're just recommendations. You can change anything you want. Um, the other question would be is, do you want to change the fee? Is right now $25 total. You could make it more. You could make it poor, uh, per unit, um, or you could keep it the same. All right. 
should be sharing. Am I up? Portable toilet regulations, is it showing? Yes. yes. Awesome. Thank you. Just making sure. All right. So it looks like the kind of the standard piece that we've had. So kind of the first change was semi-public facility definition, privately owned or oper operated location, which is open to the general public persons, authorized being owner operated, not including a single family residence. So I'm I'm just gonna pick someplace at random. That I, might, I would see like We'll pick Ed's Weenies as an example. That there's obviously no fixed toilet location, but that's someplace it's going to be an extend that's extended levels of duration of operation. If it was, if they had a, a portable toilet there, that might fall under that semi-public where it's public use because it's a restaurant equivalent. Um, but it's going to be for a longer term kind of piece without fixed facilities. Is that kind of what we're thinking first? I mean, public, just as an example right. off the top of my head. Yep. Okay. Um, I'll, I can start. So we have a bunch of pieces. One of the first things that popped out for me um, was, I know it's kind of at the end, was the penalty section. $25 each day is a new offense. Um, I'm not sure if that's in in line with our, our other um, fines for failure to comply because usually i thought it was an es escalate it's been a long day i apologize everybody an escalating scale um and i forget what the scale is unfortunately on top of my head but it, 25 50 100 and then 100 each day after that or something to that that range um i'm not sure if we want to have our violation fines be consistent across violations if this is different than other ones i'm not sure i mean certainly some things and some operators you know a $25 fine is massive compared to cost of doing business for others. Um, I just want to sure if you want to be in, make them consistent across violations for board violations. I'm just not positive. But so that's one just, of the pieces that kind of jumped at me. I can just repeat the language that we use in others, if you want to do that. Just a thought. I don't know if the board has any thoughts about that. Mr. Baker? I do like the escalation. I do like, uh, you know, a, a day, for, you know, first there'll be a warning, uh, like we always do. Yep. Uh, and then after that, I, I do like the escalation as it gets, uh, you know, a more, more of a blatant uh, sort of disregard for public health, uh, you know, increasing it from, you know, 25 to 50 to 100 and then 100 for every day thereafter. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think that is uh, maybe, maybe close to consistent with what we had listed for our trash hauler regs yep uh when they were in non-compliance okay go back to the top because that was the, that was one of the ones that i had I had looked at i mean the five days any month five consecutive days more than five days have an agreement that's going to be maintained appropriately. Um, that change from five days was so. This is coming off. Was this model regulation, or did you borrow this from somebody else, Francis? Um, so I took it from a couple different places. Um, five um, days seems to be it? the more consistent. Okay, that's kind of wonder. What I was wondering is that more restrictive, less restrictive, or only because it's red, so it was changed from from the where it came from so i was kind of curious of kind of where that fell on that so okay yeah, so just usually when i do it i look at multiple towns see what they do and then so five was the most consistent number all right great nope that was my question mr baker go ahead uh, i i think and I, I might be wrong on this and jim might have the answer uh that uh portable toilets are serviced weekly uh when there's an agreement with a contractor uh, and maybe it, it might make sense to have it, have our number be seven days instead of five so that it lines up with the maintenance schedule. So that at, you know, at day seven, that's when, you know, they're either picking it up or they're, or they're maintaining it on the, well, on the maybe, schedule. Yeah. It's, it's all based on volume at the end of the day. Oh, is it? Okay. All right. I didn't know if it was a timing, uh, 
thing or, or, or a volume thing, which makes total sense. So thank you. I will say having had a portable toilet at a Cub Scout camp, it's more than seven, it's more than once in seven days that they need to remove. Okay. <laughs> <Be fixed. laughs> Jim, did you have any thoughts? No, I, like I say, I would imagine most uh, rental agreements are based on what you're using it for and, and the pumping frequency would then follow as well. So I'm going to start with this change, look at changes, and then we can talk about anything else I think might be the easiest way. So no closer than 10 feet from property line, unless there's a waiver request for some special reason, I'd say. Operation no more than five days in any one month, except for public facilities where it's infeasible. So again, my first one would be the Castle in the Trees and Fay Park, where we usually have portable toilets, you know, all summer because they're such high use activity, such high use locations. Seasonal semi-public kind of we talked about. So I think I would guess that would mean either summer restaurant, not without facilities, um, summer camps, perhaps. I'm not sure, but I've never been to Camp Neshoba, but it's just an example of someplace where they may need additional resources. I'm just not sure what their fixed resources are for, for their activities, but Cases of repair seems appropriate. Reinspections, would that be after that five day piece? Is that kind of what we're thinking? Yes. Or is that, yeah. So if it's more than five days on a reinspection? Yep. Okay. Would that be for every more than five days? So, for example, we'll, I'll pick Fay Park, um, where it's there basically from this time of year till September, would we be reinspecting that? And I know we wouldn't charge the municipality for reinspection, but would that be a an approved use longer than five days? Would that require a five day every five day reinspection? If that was um, the municipality, or would that be? I'm just kind of curious of how that when we say yeah, that'd that be a little different. We'd start kind of. I'd be going out and making sure that they're in compliance in general, but not probably every five days. Probably every like two weeks. Can they extend it to seven days and leave it at $25? That's up to you, Gina. Uh, Baker just mentioned that, you know, to extend it to seven days, and that way they have time to get it, clean it up and uh, give them a break. And, and why raising if they don't, they don't make any problem? If they do make problem, then you uh, don't do it like a, $50, $100 penitence. No, that's not right. Especially now that everything's so expensive. So would you rather do a seven day? Uh, maybe, uh, like Baker said, seven days, you know, and leave it 25. That was, that, was the, on the, that was on the cleaning, uh, but, you know, with the, they're right about the volume, you know, if it's used a lot. Um, and it's better to be clean more often. Um, yeah. yeah, I think we just may want to just define what that re we have a fee for reinspections, but like what that either what the trigger is for a reinspection or what the timeline is for a reinspection or both. If there's a complaint, it's a reinspection. If it's, you know, or at some point, timeline it's a reinspection or you know in every seven days 10 days 14 days whatever that number is um we can certainly do randoms un, un uncharged random inspections outside of that timeline because we don't want to say oh i did a random inspection on monday and tuesday and tuesday afternoon and wednesday and now you owe us a hundred dollars that's obviously unreasonable but a random inspection just i was driving by i stopped to check on it that's different um but we may just want to clarify what frequency of reinspections by either timeline or complaint or both just so we know what that means and because it's not clear from line seven and i'm not sure if it's if like section one okay um 
So we can define it as after the five day period or as complaints are received um, unless extended use is approved by the Board of Health. And then, and, you know, but with that one, as part of the waiver process, we can put in whatever yeah. that either you have to demonstrate you have a maintenance agreement, kind of like any other, you know, septic system that you have a maintenance agreement and then subject to complaint or random just reinspection if there's an issue kind of thing. So, yeah, no, I think that seems reasonable. Uh, we talked about enforcement. Was there any other pieces? 10 day request 10 day as i say 10 days is consistent with our other request for a hearing for a complaint right it should be consistent with our other language do anyone else have any thoughts about the totality of the proposed regulation or about any of the other non-red areas Mr. Baker, I uh, just I, I think this is I think it's good. I think we can include all of the uh, all of the the red items that we went through as well. And uh, thanks, Francis, for putting this together and uh, finally get this on the books for us. It's been it's been a while. I'll make the changes. So the packet has been. It's proposed regulation. I'm trying to just double check our process because regulation is different than, you know, like a waiver or a variance. Um, regulation was posted. I'm not sure if this was for regulation hearing. Did it need to be posted pre vote or does it need to be posted after the vote to newspaper of record or that kind of stuff? I simply am not positive. I apologize. I should know this. Um, um so, yep so in terms nope. of posting we did post in the paper um but we got postponed because of town meeting when it was posted for um it's not required to be posted but it's a good practice obviously um only title five uh regulations are required to be posted and they have specific procedure um so it, it's up to whatever the board would like to do. I can re-advertise it for the next meeting. Or we can vote on it. it it's entirely up to you. Um, let's start with that piece. Um, do we think there's been mm -hmm. adequate public notice regarding portable toilet regulation to the community for us to take action? Uh, I believe let's, even if we were to vote on it tonight, it would need to be posted that it's been enacted and I think we have a 30 day for feedback responses and stuff. Say that one more time, but Mr. Chair. If if we if we vote on it tonight, I, I, it I think that I think that the 30 day before it's enacted unless it's an emergency regulation, but I'm not positive about that one. Um I said we haven't done regs in a while, so I can't remember. The last reg I think was trash haulers and the big piece of that was a very long time ago so i mean it, um, it, it, it was it was on the agenda uh it did get posted yep. and it was in our packet and that's all online and, and everywhere and you know everybody knows we meet the second and fourth wednesday of every month so i think it's adequate notice and uh i'm okay to vote on it tonight i don't feel unless unless you guys don't want to it's it's, it's up to you but i think we we're fine doing it if if you're comfortable with it do you know any thoughts? You talking to me? Yes. No. Any idea, any thoughts about how you'd I, like to proceed with this? Whether we want to table it I for? Con I concur with uh, with Baker. All right. Well, then uh, we had a few edits that we made to section four, paragraph one. I take it back. Section four. Part seven um, and section five, part two. Other than those two changes, were there any other changes that I missed? Well, okay, well then, and what's the pleasure of the board? 
Mr. Baker. Uh, I will make a motion to uh, approve the uh, proposed regulation for the Littleton Board of Health portable toilet regulations uh, with the adjustment to section five, uh, number seven, uh, as, as discussed, uh, as well as, four. I'm sorry, section four, was it section four, number seven? Yep. And, uh, and the other section, remind me, it was, uh, five, section five, five number two. two. Yes. As discussed. All right. Motion and second. Roll call vote. Mr. Baker? Kevin Baker votes yes. Mr. Fratelloni? You know, Fratelloni voted yes. Chair votes yes. Motion passes for the proposed portable toilet regulations for the town of Littleton. Um, so we will need to have those final edits in place. And it will need to go to the town clerk and work from there. And I'm sure Ms. Crory will let us know if there's anything else from the town clerk implementation side that we need to be aware of. And um, the town clerk's office should give it the appropriate uh, bylaw number in those pieces for the town code. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Francis, for all your work on that. We appreciate it. Nice job. All right, so we're a few minutes late for our 710 discussion around regulation for private wells. Um, Dan, can I just cut in one second? Of course, sir. Um, so I'm just looking at the packet now, and this isn't what I sent for the well regulation. It does look like the it does look like the very old original proposed like model regulation from DEP rather than the one that we've been working on for a while. Yeah, so there's a lot of track changes that didn't go through in this version. Um, I know Matt isn't here and he wanted to discuss it as well. Should we table it to the next meeting? It is in the shared folder um, with the edits if anybody wants to look at it otherwise. Um, but I can get the cleaner version uh, to Brenda. I'll make a motion to continue. Second. Okay, we have a motion to continue and a second uh, roll call vote. Kevin Baker. Kevin Baker votes yes. Gino Fratelloni. Gino Fratelloni, yes. And the chair votes yes. We're going to uh, continue the regulation for private well um, public hearing, and, or excuse me, discussion um, until our next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be June 12th. We did have a member of the audience who left after that. I'd say they were here for our well discussion, but we're very, very sorry. If you're still out there and can hear us, we apologize for, for that change. All right. Our next discussion point is the ID decision support tool. Um, Dr. Wason didn't share any of our of his updated tools with us. Um, it is summertime. Obviously, RSV numbers are down. COVID numbers are are down. Um, last set of numbers I saw from the state uh, were pretty consistent with the last few weeks, which is a couple of hundred cases and a couple deaths. Um, certainly not minimizing those numbers, but it, we seem like we've had a we've plateaued on the low end um, the last few weeks from the statewide data. I'm not seeing wastewater data, so we're in a from an infectious disease point from the the biggies that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, looks like you're in a much better place. I'm not sure if uh, Jim or Francis have any any other insight of anything else we may have been seeing now that we're getting to be summertime. It's obviously it's New England, so Lyme and all those great tick-borne and mosquito-borne illnesses. The mosquito ones aren't quite there yet. Um, the tick ones have been there all along, but the activity hasn't quite gotten bad enough that we're seeing those cases yet. But I'm not sure if you guys either of, of you have any insight of anything you've seen otherwise for any of our other infectious disease or pathogens? Nothing, nothing to report. Um, I will add though that we um, actually on our new health department page, um, we were able to make a web page for the ID tool. So it is available in real time for the public and if they ever want to look at it. Awesome, thank you, sir. Went 
bouncing around multiple screens at once. Oh. All right, our next discussion is our 720 discussion around uh, proposed Board of Health Code of Conduct. Uh, as I'm pulling it up for the screen, a little bit of background. Uh, last year, after much discussion, the select board um, developed a code of conduct code of conduct for the select board around what is expected, what is acceptable behavior, both within the board and within the board's interactions with um, the community and town officials, et cetera. Basically, what is expected from a, a civility and operational perspective. They have made the request that all boards and committees in Littleton um, use theirs as a template basically to start the discussion does not need to match theirs exactly if, the, if a board or committee chooses not to but really looking at how we can be consistent across all elected and appointed uh members of the community of of the town of of how we um compose ourselves and and behave within the community in our in our leadership roles uh, here in Littleton. So I'm going to share theirs. I should be in your packet. So I think most folks have probably already seen this. I do know we, I believe we talked about this briefly last year as well. I apologize for the rapid scroll here, everybody. <coughs> Again, sorry, hope nobody's getting nauseous. All right, there you go. I apologize. So, we'll start with just opening up to the board for any comments or discussions in general. Has anyone had an opportunity to see this either as it worked its way through the select board process or from our packet? Uh, any thoughts or anything as far as a board of health or how we operate or in general about a code of conduct. Mr. Baker. Uh, yeah. In, in, in general, I, I think it, it reads well. I mean, it's tailored to the select board, uh, but I think we could, we could craft this uh, for the board of health as well. Just with a just with you know insert insert board of health here. Uh, the only thing I'd really like to take a look at, I guess, are the you know the enforcement and what are the consequences. Uh, you know, if someone you know really just blatantly disregards the code of conduct, and um, you know, since we yeah, are there is actually, yeah, no, I saw that, but maybe we want to look at some other. Um, Just thinking out loud, maybe maybe we can come up with some other things too. Nope, that's okay. We love discussion. That's what we. That's what this is about. So you know, obviously the select board is a composed for the select board. So obviously language would change slightly, but basically it's a a self governing, a self policing body that is enforceable by the members on the members of the body. So in our case, it would be the the board members. Um, enforcing the code of conduct upon each other. Mm. Um, select board members will violence may be subject to public censure by the select board, um, which basically is a board vote saying that someone that that is the opinion of the board that the behavior was not acceptable, whatever that behavior was as defined above. Um, I'll be for, for me, I'm a little bit I, I understand the spirit and the heart of um, number four, part C, during a meeting after initial warning, a member who acts in an inappropriate manner is unruly or disorderly may be removed from a meeting by a majority vote of the remaining members. Um, in heart and spirit, I get that because I think we've all been in those meetings, whether it's members of the public, members of the of the board or somebody else, someplace else or some meeting we've been into where it is no longer productive, useful, and it's actually moved beyond a disagreement of ideas and philosophies to something more than that um i will say certainly in my time here in the board of health we've never had anything even anywhere in the neighborhood which has been wonderful um 
intellectually, I guess I have a little bit of a barrier with that because as a member of the board, we were elected members that I guess I'm torn a little bit between completely understanding the rationale for Part C. Uh, intellectually, I'm having a little bit concerned with having the rest of the board basically removing a, an elected member from a meeting because inappropriate, unruly, disorderly. I think unruly and disorderly, I think we could probably all be in the same neighborhood of defining what that means. Inappropriate, uh, that's a little bit more subjective. And obviously as a board, if four of us or three of us agree that something is inappropriate, we're probably going to be in the similar page. But I still have a little bit of a concern, I think, with removing an elected member from a voting position on a board, even if it's just for one meeting. Hmm. on that one I, i'm i'll be honest i'm i get it i completely understand i'm just intellectually i'm a little bit wary of of, of how that actually would operationalize i expect the best from everybody always that it would never come up and never be an issue and if it did come up that i would expect the best from the remaining members to use their best judgment and you know really be thoughtful and, and circumspect before taking that level of an action um i just always I'm nervous whenever anything goes into black and white as a rule of, you know, the kind of the what ifs and how do we make sure that we are consistent and safe and truthfully accepting of, even if they're strongly worded disagreements among members, that we're still accepting of even strongly worded disagreements among members, as long as it's mm -hmm. not, you know, fisticuffs. <laughs> I'm just not sure where that line is sometimes, and that can be a little bit hard, but I'm not saying it should come out or should not. I'm just, that's, I think, was one of the ones for me that was kind of a little bit, I'm just not quite sure of how do we operationalize that and make sure that we are thoughtful about it. Mr. Baker. I mean, since the Board of Health doesn't have those issues, does it, uh, does it make sense to eliminate that? I feel like, you know, public censure uh, is probably the worst thing uh, that could happen to someone on a board. And I don't know that I don't know that you even need letter C in there. Um, but I guess if if there's something that is totally uncontrollable, there needs to be a backstop. No, I'm, I mean, I kind of this is kind of an open discussion, so I'm kind of not going to make this too formal, but I, I kind of agree with you that at some point, you know, if someone is having a emotional, medical, or just a really strong opinion that's over the top and has become beyond oh, disruptive, example. physical, whatever, that that, you know, at some point we are, we are Zoom, so it's easy. It's a button click. But when we're back in person, if there is an issue with something, being able to say, okay, officer, I need you to remove this elected member from this room right now. That's a hard, that's a hard ask without having something in writing to say that that's something that we feel is appropriate. Mr. Baker. Just hypothetically, uh, let's say uh, someone on the board uh, harasses a resident or a business owner or another board member and, and gets warned uh, and then it happens again. Just because it's it's a habit, or it's it's how that person maybe they're not as PC, you know, as as they should be. Um, you know that that's something that, according to this document, could have a board member removed if the other members of the board agree on that. And um, and it would only be for me. It wouldn't be from the board altogether. Right. That's beyond right. the, That's beyond our authority. <clears throat> that we can't make our own rules to expel a elected member from their membership, but from an individual meeting, that's maybe required at some point. I guess one of those those nuclear options kind of thing that we hope we never have have ever ever have to use, and we don't expect to ever have to use. Yeah. But if it's not there and and it something happens, it's it's a hard one. Um, I'd cer I'd cer I certainly like the opportunity to discuss this with the full board. Yeah, no, no, I would agree. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, obviously if the board makes a motion, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask for a motion to, to move on this tonight anyway. Again, I think this is, we're a relatively small group and I think it would be nice to have everyone's say and opinion on this one. Um, 
again, having gone through the others, most of the pieces seem relatively reasonable. We obviously have some some language stuff to move it from select board to excuse me from select board to board of health. Um, the reporting pieces, some of those pieces of how they differ and how we operate from the select board. But I mean, most of the stuff is be thoughtful, be kind, be a good scout, basically, and uh, work through channels. Hey, I'm a board of health member, and I'm going to walk into the town clerk's office and say, I need you to do this for me. Like, that's obviously not appropriate. And the town clerk is wonderful, but probably not going to feel much pressure from me. This came really from the psych board where, short of, you know, a few elected boards, everyone in town, they fall under, under the select board. So, but maintaining that piece of, we work the channel. So at this point, if we have something that we need from, from town hall, whatever part of town hall it is, you know, really we have a couple routes. We can either make the request from Francis as our paid professional to work with town hall to mm -hmm. accomplish something or to the town administrator as a board to the administrative officer of the town you know, through the select board to, for something, you know, I really kind of see us as those are our two kind of chains of command pieces as opposed to, you know, so they, the, here on number two, they're talking about time administrator, police chief, fire chief as the three direct reports to the select board. Obviously those would come out. Um, and I know we've looked at, it, I believe Francis officially is a direct report to the board of health with a dotted to town administrator from the administrative side of things, I believe. Um, you know, if I think most of the rest of this is pretty straightforward and reasonable, work through channels, don't, don't go around other people and, uh, be nice, be thoughtful about what you say and how you say it. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> um, if, if we're going to table this, I'm happy to work on this and try to do some, some wordsmithing to make it not select board and make it board of health. Um, and see if there's anything else that jumps out at me. Um, I'm happy to work on that, put it on the share drive or circulate it out for um, for comments for when we come back. Um, and I can happy to, you know, we can talk about people's comments and we'll, I hate doing, you know, cha track changes as a group, but obviously we want everybody's comments thoughtfully integrated and not just have me, for example, take everybody's comments and just... <laughs> If no one has any difference of opinion on an area, then that's easy. If we have three different opinions on, on one line, I'm not going to make that call of what it should be, and that would be a discussion point. Um, but I'm happy to, if it's the pleasure of the board, to, to kind of go through and clean up some of the language so it's Board of Health as opposed to Select Board, if you would like. Mr. Baker. Uh, Mr. Chair, that would be great if you wouldn't mind just tailoring it to the Board of Health and teeing it up for our next meeting. Uh, when Mr. Wason, Dr. Wason, and Mr. Davis are back, and we can hopefully uh, uh, approve it uh, after some discussion. My pleasure. Gina Farnoni, any questions, thoughts, concerns around, one, a code of conduct in general, and two, about the specific version that the select board is, has put into place for themselves and shared with other boards and committees for evaluation as a starting point for their own codes of conduct. Any thoughts, Gino? Are you talking to me? I am. Any thoughts about a code of conduct in general or about the specific one that the select board has implemented for their use and shared with us for starting points for our board? I, I don't understand why people, they go out of the conduct, code conduct. You know what I mean? Sometimes they, they say something and they should apologize. But of course they have to, you know, talk to the board. I mean, they, they have to be diplomatic. You can't just say anything you wanted to say, you know? Don't offend anybody. I I think they all the the meeting should be do for the the rest of the members two more. 
enforcement of right. code of conduct. So, you know, this is very simple. Express your, your whatever you think of it. If there is something right. There's sometimes it ha accidentally comes something that doesn't right. You have to apologize. But just don't don't dismiss the individual because accidentally he says something he wasn't supposed to say. Everybody should follow the conduct, code of conduct, everybody. Uh, in, in so many years where we are uh, being a, mem a member, we never had a problem. But enforcement of code of conduct, that is good to let people know. All right, thank you, sir. So um, this is just a discussion. So I'm going to say we're going to continue the discussion into our January 12th, January, sorry, <laughs> June 12th. We're going to really continue this one. We're going to continue <laughs> this to our June 12th um, meeting. I will, um, in the meantime, do some wordsmithing to adjust it to our needs and circulate it to the group for their review prior to our next scheduled meeting if that is acceptable. All right. That gets us down to uh, administrative matters. We have two sets of minutes to look at. I'm going to do a quick scan to see if we have. All right. So for March 27, 2024, we do have a quorum for members present at that meeting present this evening. Uh, did anyone have a chance to, or did everyone have a chance to review the March 27, 2024 meeting minutes? And were there any notes, comments, questions, suggestions, or edits required for March 27? Talked about Jennifer Street, the tobacco sale. Um, they did not request a hearing, so the fine was paid. The fine was paid. Continued discussion around model wells, the ID to support tools, department goals, discussion around packets and when Mayport need to get to the office so that it was timely for our review. Order complaints in conjunction with uh, Vice Chair of Planning and administrative pieces. Mr. Baker. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for uh, both March 27, 2024 and the uh, April 24th, 2024, Board of Health meetings as presented. I second. I have a motion and second. Roll call vote. Kevin Baker. Kevin Baker votes yes. Jennifer Aloni. Jennifer Aloni, yes. Chair votes yes. Minutes for 327 24 and 424 24 are approved as presented. Thank you all on that. Thank you, Brenda, for your excellent work on our minutes. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank that you for us, all of you. That gets us to correspondence. Uh, it's okay with the board. I will start for correspondence. Uh, we did receive a piece from the town accountant yesterday, so I don't think it's gone out to the whole board, although it's nothing that we haven't seen before. It's regarding signature authorizations for accounts payable. Um, with the new election, they request that each um, town border committee vote of how we will process or approve signatures or signature the signatory process for any outstanding um, invoices uh, regarding the board. So I'm going to, I might as well share it. Uh, yes, Mr. Baker, as I'm doing my share. I was going to uh, nominate Mr. Uh, Francis Daigle to uh, sign on our behalf. Do a quick scan again. I can look at it yesterday, but I did not look at it yet at the beginning this morning. Just making sure. Uh, okay. Must vote to designate number of signatures or specifically required to sign off or approve bills. Only required if the board or committee is seeking less than a majority to authorize payments. Please force a copy of the approved meeting minutes to show this vote. So I so we have a motion on the floor. We did not have a second. So 
Um, if we can discuss that motion real quick before we get a second, I, I would say we have very few invoices at the moment. Who knows what will come up in the future? That um, do we feel comfortable having invoices come before the board for approval, majority of the board, and then we can authorize Francis to sign on our behalf once That's... the vote is while the board is taken. Yes, okay, okay. I think this. I think this language is basically saying the chair. If the board chooses, the chair can independently and without a vote of the board sign off on invoices. Um, and if you do, if you want to do something like that with a vote, the board is not voting for invoices or signing off on invoices. A majority of the board signing off on it, then you need to basically take an action saying the board can sign on their own without any or some other person without any other board action. Um, I think we want to. Do we want to keep it in house in that the board votes on any invoices and then just authorizes. Francis says our professional to sign off on our behalf. Yes, sir. So moved. moved. Makes sense. All right. Yeah. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? You have a motion and a second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote. Kevin Baker. Kevin Baker votes yes. Unified Alone. Unified Alone. Yes. And the chair votes yes. So um, this will be in the minutes and then um an extra piece of work for brenda that once our minutes are written and approved not only a copy to town clerk's office but we can if we include a copy of the minutes from this meeting to uh, michelle reynolds the town accountant for their records for our our process for invoice and accounts payable process all right very i good. don't think we had a very good interception with it all together I don't think I had any group. other pieces of correspondence. I'm not sure. Does anybody else have any other pieces of correspondence either that I missed and did not bring forward or that they would like to bring forward that they have? Mr. Baker. Uh, the link to the opioid survey uh, went through the town news email today. So... Hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of uh, feedback on that and people filling that out and letting us know uh, what they think about it. Now, as a good little researcher, of course, I never want to look at my data until my data is completely put together and compiled, but I'm going to put Francis on the spot going, have we gotten any responses yet? Have you seen anything? <laughs> you never look till it's all compiled, but if you happen to open one, have we gotten anything yet? <laughs> Not strong enough to give data yet. <laughs> Not strong enough, but we have gotten responses. We've gotten a few. Um, okay. There'll be a lot of newsletters that's going to be in this month. So at the end of June meeting, we should be able to kind of give you a better idea of what we're looking at for data so far. All right. No, that's great. I mean, it's obviously we want thousands of responses, but it's at least 10%. out there we're starting to get a... I was gonna say though, if we had a ten percent a ten a ten percent response rate on a survey, we could publish that just that number. Never mind any data we came out of it because ten percent response for a, a municipal survey would be amazing. Yes, short of making it a mandatory requirement like in part of the census or something, but we're never going to get that. Cash prizes. Cash prizes. Okay. <laughs> um. Any other correspondence that anybody have? I'm, I just double check my list. I don't think I have anything else outstanding for correspondence or um, ongoing things. The opioid discussion we just talked about, and we'll look as we get some data and closer to um, summer start pulling together some focus groups and those pieces and, and work with our peers across town and all the disciplines that are involved, which is basically every discipline um, here in town. Uh, of how best to utilize this resource to best meet public health needs of our community because it's it's everywhere. Does anyone else have any issues, comments, concerns to share? Okay, we're making great time. Francis, how are things going? You're a lot of fun. what eight eight weeks in now, give or take? Yeah. Uh, nine, yeah. Okay. Is there anything that the board can do to help support you as you get your feet under you now a little bit? And are, are there any items that you're seeing that 
we can assist you with to help make you, the department, the town more successful? Um, the board has been great, very supportive. Um, Kevin's been awesome. Um, it's been a really good experience and we're just growing. So it's moving in all directions and the board's been very responsive to any questions I have. So it's been a very easy transition. Great, no, okay. thank you, sir. Thank you Jim, what can we do for you, sir? Um, as I told Francis, I'm here to help Mo in the transition, make sure things go smoothly. And uh, other than that, let me know if there's anything else you need. Jim, it's been great as well, right. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we love Jim, we really do. Yeah. All right. Um, anyone else have any other issues? Anything you want to share? I will say it is uh, EMS week. So again, so I admit I'll acknowledge my bias, but yeah, happy EMS week to all of our emergency medical services providers out there. Kind of the third service of, of public safety that always often forgotten that everyone remembers firefighters and police officers. EMS, you only think of when you need them. So, um, you know, recognize hard job doing part public safety, part rescue, part public health, part medical all at once, you know, in people's living rooms and people's highways. So, so thank you to all the EMS professionals who are still out there doing it every single day. So I appreciate my peers and my friends who are still out there doing it and everybody else who, who makes it safe for us to be out there when we do silly things. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Brenda, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I uh, just want to let you know, um, June 26th, I will not be at the meeting. I will be out of the country. Okay. I'm hoping that's for pleasure. Um, we, yeah, I'm going on a mission trip to Brazil. <laughs> okay. That's pleasure, though. Yep. No, that's Enjoy awesome. Thank you for in. your work out there, making the world a slightly better place. Even, you know, whatever, whatever scale you can make the world a better place, it matters. It makes a difference. So thank you for that. All right. I think we have covered our agenda. If no one else has any correspondence, discussion, or member comments... What's the world of oh, I make a make member comment. I wanted to say thank you to Jim and Francis were here and Kevin and Dan. Thank you so much for being here. And also, I don't, I'm not forgetting Brenda. She's such a nice lady. We are very lucky to have her. Okay? Seconded. Thank you, Dina. And God bless you. Thanks, be sir. safe. All of you be safe. All right, Mr. Baker. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. And a second. Roll call vote. Kevin Baker. Kevin Baker votes yes. Gino Fratellone. Gino Fratellone, thank you for, for your assistance and, and for your time that you were kind enough to be at the meeting. God bless you guys and be safe. Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. And the chair votes yes. The May 22nd, 2024, Littleton Board Health Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Thanks. Brenda, Francis, Jim, everybody.